will advance to Sunday's second round game versus either Baylor or Vanderbilt. It is the 26th consecutive home victory for the Hokies. Uh, as a courtesy to your fellow media members, as well as coaches and student athletes, please silence your cell phones at this time. And when you ask your first question, please provide your name and media affiliation. Uh, if you're joining us on Zoom, use the raise hand function and we will address your questions on Zoom. And as always, recording video of press conferences on cell phones or cameras in the room is prohibited. Uh, joining us on the dais are Olivia Summiel, Georgia Amor, and head coach Kenny Brooks. Coach, we'll begin with an opening statement. I am so proud of these kids, each and every one of them. Uh, the way they stepped up, it looked a little dicey in the beginning of the week. Uh, when we first started trying to go over uh, Marshall, trying to emulate Marshall's pressure. Um, but, you know, they, they were diligent and just trying to understand what we needed to do, how we needed to take care of the basketball. And um, I, I can't be more proud of our group. They stepped up. Uh, even, even in George's absence, we, we played really poised. And we wanted, to, we wanted to keep our poise amongst their chaos. And, uh, you know, Marshall had a tremendous year. Uh, really enjoyed watching their progression from the start to the finish. Um, and uh, Kim does a really great job. And uh, so I'm just, but I'm proud of our kids. I don't know where to start. Do I talk about Olivia's 14 rebounds? Do I talk about Clara Strack's 17 points? Uh, do I talk about Matilda's X 21? She gets over 1,000 uh, today. Uh, and then Carly Wenzel, you know, who grew up and was a big girl today. And we really, really, uh, you know, just appreciated all of it. So very proud of our kids. Looking forward to, uh, advancing. Let's open it up to questions for the student athletes. We'll begin with Mark in the front row. Uh, Kenny, you had called this week. You had, you had said it was an... Un What's that? Is it for me or no, student athletes. Yes. Um, Olivia, uh, you guys uh, in Georgia, you guys shot lights out in the first three quarters. What helped that offense be so uh, prolific tonight? Um, I would say confidence, right? Just belief in each other um, and our teammates and, and knowing that when the opportunity came, we all had to step up and knock them down. I think we shared the ball incredibly well today. It was so fun to be out there playing, um, just, just to be able to, to share the ball in, in that environment. Um, Hokie Nation was, again, incredible. Um, but it was a really fun team win. I think we moved the ball and, and found the right shots for the open player. And how about defensively? What did you think you guys did to make it a tough shooting night for them? I mean, I think Coach had great calls in switching up our uh, defenses. You know, we went from a 3-2 to a 2-3 to man. So I think we kept them on their toes and pushed them into positions where they didn't really want to thrive in. I must say, I do think that, you know, we didn't really contest some of their shots and they just missed. Um, so that's something that we have to definitely work on for the next game. But I think overall, we just did a really good job of keeping them on their toes. Let's go to Andy in the second row. Uh, Andy Bitter from Tech Sideline, Georgia. Uh, to see Eck get going like that, especially after the, the last couple games she's had, how satisfying and how much of a lift was that for this team? Yeah, it was so great for, for her and for us. Um, I think the biggest difference is, is that we, we were having fun. And I think when you have fun and the offensive flows, you know, the confidence grows. And mm -hmm. I'm very proud of Tilly because she was sitting on that 999 number for a hot minute. But she had a day to day, and, uh, and that confidence will carry over for her because. You know, she's, she's the type of girl that needs to see it go in, and I'm glad it went in today for her. We'll go back row corner next. <clears throat> Congratulations, guys. Um, so Marshall presented a very unique challenge. What about, uh, what about them that they did, um, like, allowed you guys to have the game that you did? Um, because it seemed like what they were trying to do worked really well early, and then you guys just got momentum and took off. Um, so what do you think the, the moment was that really made it click for you guys? Um, I think, you know, that, that defense, they give it and they take it. If they have runs where maybe they'll have a few energy plays and hold, hold us to a few stops, but they were giving up a whole lot, and they were taking risks, and they were, you know, leaving people open. So I think we did a good job at exploiting it when we could. Um, and I think even towards the end, you know, that the energy that felt like within the press, it, it wasn't there anymore. I, I think they got pretty flat towards the end. So I think we're, we did a pretty good job at, you know, breaking it, staying composed, like time after time after time. Um, as you said, there was instances where they did creep up on us, but I think overall we did a good job at handling it. Second row over here. Once again, please state your name and affiliation when you ask your first question. Thank you. Thomas Bray, Collegiate Toms. You know, after the ACC tournament, how did it feel to come, you know, back to Castle and shoot the ball so well? I think 
it's incredible. Um, just just to be at home, um, we were really um, fortunate to earn a four seed, and um, I think that that's a testament to the work that we put in all season long. Um, but to be home um, in front of Hokie Nation, it's just an absolute, absolutely incredible feeling. Um, really, really proud, and it was fun to see the ball go in and have the energy spark from the home court advantage. Back. This, this is for uh, Tim Thomas from the Tech Launch, but this is for either of you guys. Um, Clara Strack, making your NCAA tournament debut as a freshman, replacing the three-time ACC Player of the Year, perfect 100% from the field, 17 points. What enabled her to have that type of success, both from what she did on the court and the ment mentality she brought to the game today? Let's start with Olivia, then Georgia. Uh, Strack attack. <laughs> That's two words. Um, we like to use them all the time. Uh, she's fun to watch and even even more fun to play with. I'm, I'm excited to see where, where her future goes. Um, but she's been huge for us this year. Um, I think Coach Burks has said it a couple times. Like she could be starting on other programs, but um, she's kind of taken taken taking her role and, and learned from the incredible Elizabeth Kitley. Um, obviously, we don't have her um, with us within this tournament run, but I think Claire has definitely had um, her leadership to learn from all year long. Um, and to see her kind of step into her own tonight, I think it, it was really awesome. Um, and when she confidently knocked down that three, we were gassed for her. That was just absolutely incredible. Um, so we're really happy for her strike attack. <laughs> Luke and then David. Luke Creasy with HD Media. Um, you guys give up 20 offensive rebounds, but nearly double them up on the defensive end. Can you talk about um, the, the effort on that specific end of the glass to, to kind of offset what they were doing um, by grabbing some of those offensive boards? I think that we could have done a much better job, <laughs> obviously, at boxing out and, and grabbing those rebounds because they had those possessions. I think even in the first, the first half, I think that's how they kind of got their – they chipped it back, and it was through second chance opportunities, and that's something that we – we're good out in the first five minutes and then kind of slipped a bit away from that. Um, but I, I, I don't think necessarily was mentally us making up for it. I think we were trying to be aggressive, but you know we definitely had to do a, a better job at grabbing the defensive boards. I think they have like a, a chuck and chase mentality a little bit. Like some of their some of their shot selection is a little all over the place. So I think we needed to do a better job of recognizing that and understanding that wild shots or long shots lead to wild and long rebounds. Um, so I think that's just a learning point for us. But we were able to clean it up on the defensive end, which was good. Uh, David Cunningham, Tech Sideline. Uh, Olivia, you guys mentioned the mentality and the poise. You had to stay composed. What goes into that? And how proud were you of the ability to, you know, it didn't matter what quarter it was, that you guys were kind of able to just stay mentally there? I think it's a testament to two things. One, our coaching staff and the way that they prepared us all week. Um, I wish you guys could be in our practices to see to see what we went through um, this week. Um, just just preparing for that pressure and um, the different style of play that we were, were facing tonight. And then I think second, it's a testament to the leadership that we have on our team and, and, and the experience. Um, obviously, we have some freshmen out there, but they were able to learn and, and pick up and understand that in order to um, handle kind of that pressure and that kind of style of play. You just have to keep keep your head on your shoulders and, and, and stay poised throughout. Go ahead, David. Uh, Georgia, Kenny mentioned that Clara or, uh, that Carly uh, played like a big girl today. What impressed you the most about her composure and the way that she handled and facilitated and all that? Yeah, I mean, it, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. She just looked like she had fun out there, seriously. Because like, sometimes she gets in her own head. And you know, you can, in practice, for sure, it's <laughs> mistake and mistake. And she kind of compounds it. But today, like, did she have mistakes? Yeah, who didn't? But I was proud of her for the way that she continued it on and carried it over and kind of put it away. It was almost like she completely forgot about what happened, which take it as you will. But for today, it was a good thing, because her mentality was great. And she was aggressive. And she even you know, got a little bit of confidence and started celebrating like she was I don't know, Tom Brady or something like that. She had fun with that, and I'm proud of her. Touchdown. <laughs> ben Mark. And to follow up on that, Georgia, what was it like? You seem to have an awful lot of fun on the, on the bench tonight. <laughs> what was it like for you to, to see the team doing so well while you were on the bench in foul trouble for much of the game? Oh, yeah. I know. I was just so proud and having fun with it. You know, the, the, they were just all so confident in the way that they played. It just oozed confidence, and, and I don't know, it was just a great vibe. And, you know, Starting off the tournament, you know, the first games always can kind of be choppy and dicey. You don't know what to expect. You know, we haven't played a, a team like this literally this year, like period. I, I'm, I'm unsure about that. And, you know, you spend the whole week scouting for it and you can kind of be dramatic and spiral about it. And I think, you know, we were on high alert, but once we got the game going and moving, then it was just, it was fun and we were in control. 
you, you also could have been dramatic and spiraled about not having Liz. <clears throat> Obviously, you didn't have her last week either, but it's been a tough few weeks for you guys. What does it mean to you guys to have won an NCAA tournament game without her? Yeah, I mean... I mean, mentally, we, we knew that we weren't going to have her, so it was about, you know, let's step up and, and play together. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, she's a big part of what we do, but we're still us. <laughs> like, we still have offenses that help us, and we're, we're put in positions to be successful. It was just a matter of going out and grabbing those opportunities and, and making the most out of it. Last question. Rose Michaud obviously didn't play for, like, a month and a half or so. What did you see in her mentality that, you know, led you guys to have confidence to be like, okay, like, when we need her, like, we can trust that she can come in and make an impact, obviously, nine points, four rebounds in only 13 minutes today. Yeah, so, um, I think Rose has, has maintained such a good mindset and mentality throughout the entire season. Um, she could have just as easily thrown the towel in and be checked out, um, but she didn't, and she came to practice every day, and she, and she pushed herself, and um, we were able to push each other, and I think tonight was a great showing for her. We were happy for her and she stepped up big when we needed her, especially with the size advantage that we did have on the inside. Um, she was able to definitely, um, she was able to move some bodies for sure. Um, yeah, so we're, we're excited that she was able to have that mentality and that composure throughout the ups and downs of a season, right? Transferring is not the easiest thing in the world, um, but we're proud that she was able to stick it out and be big for us when we needed her. Olivia in Georgia, thank you for your time. Uh, the Virginia Tech locker room will be open until 618. That is 618 for the Tech locker room. We'll open it up to questions for Coach Kenny Brooks. And we'll start with Andy. Kenny, I, I can't imagine you hoped that Georgia would get in foul trouble like that, but it, is it not the worst thing in the big picture and, and maybe a sink or swim kind of way for the rest of the team to have to step up like that? No, well, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's ironic. Uh, I was at my house and she was at her house, I assume, and um, we were watching the ACC championship and uh, with, I think, one and, one and a half minutes ago, the NC State point guard fouled out and the game got a little dicey. And she texted me and she was like, um, this is getting a little dicey. And I referred back to a game when we played against um, Rutgers and she got into foul trouble at the end of the game and we didn't close it out like we really wanted to and we started laughing. And then when she got into foul trouble here, we just kind of gave each other a look and like, you know, knucklehead, I need you on the floor. And uh, but the way that everyone else stepped up, uh, it, it is a blessing because, you know, she got a lot of rest and obviously she's going to have to do a lot uh, on on um, on Sunday. But I'm so proud of the rest of the group and how they were able to step up, keep their poise amongst a lot of chaos, as I mentioned before. And uh, you know, the first thing I told the whole group was, I'm, I'm so proud of you guys because everybody stepped up in a positive way. And it was, it was a fun game to watch, a fun game to coach. So Greg in second row, third row, Mark, and then back. Greg Carey with West Virginia Metro News. Coach, uh, your girls seem to thrive playing in that environment. Just curious, what, if any, effect did you think it had on Marshall at the first five, six minutes of the game? I, I, you have to ask Marshall. Um, but, but what I can, what can, I, um, I can test to, We've played in this environment a lot. You know, last year at uh, this time, you know, it, it was a, it was a little, little eye-opening because it was the first sellout that we ever played in front of uh, in the tournament. Uh, but then since then, I think we had, you know, five or six sellouts this year. So our kids are really used to this environment. They thrive off of it. Uh, it's, definitely, it's definitely something that gives us an advantage. You know, we like to say that it's worth about eight to 10 points, you know, just being in this environment and having Hokie Nation cheer for you. So I've, I've said it a million times, you know, Hokie Nation and this crowd, Castle Guard, uh, they, make, they make a good team great. And, uh, and that's why we've won so many games in a row here. Uh, Coach, for you and your career, how unique was this Marshall team's play style? It's very unique. Uh, they, they, they're all, they're all, all in. They're committed to the pressure. You know, on, on a miss, uh, they, they set up and they're pressing. On a make, they're pressing. They're trapping. They're running around. They're very good at what they do. Uh, I mentioned earlier that you know it was fun watching them and how they progressed throughout the year. Their first few games, they were trying to do the same things, but they weren't as sharp with it. And uh, and then you know towards the end of the year. They got a lot more aggressive and they knew what they were doing. So we knew it was going to present some challenges for us. And uh, I, I looked at that box score when they played James Madison, and I still don't understand it. They, they, they forced 39 turnovers. They took 46 threes. They took 38 some free throws. Uh, I just don't understand and how the game was what it was. And, uh, but but they, make you, they make you play on your heels. And I thought our kids, that's why I'm so proud of our kids, because we were the aggressors. I think we had, what, uh, 15 turnovers. 
uh, against that pressure, and, uh, and so I thought we grew up a little bit today. Third row. Uh, Joey with Legacy Maker Sports Network. Um, so to me, this really kind of seemed like a uh, Carly and Clara coming out party. Yeah. Um, you know, how proud are you of wow. them and, um, you know, just their progression uh, as players? And, and this game really just seems. Yeah. They're, they're my babies. And, uh, you know, they just happen to be playing behind two All-Americans. And, you know, but, but they also play against two All-Americans every day. And, uh, and, and the way that Georgia and Liz uh, mentor them, you know, it's something special. And, uh, and, and I think Olivia said it, you know, Clara would be starting for a lot of teams. And, you know, the way that she's progressed this year, uh, I, I told her, you know, when Liz, when Liz went down, I said, we keep saying that you're going to be good, you're going to be good, you're going to be good. You need to be good now. And I think that her mindset, you know, she's, I don't know, she's a big smooth. I don't even know if she knew there was an NCAA tournament. She just, she doesn't get, she doesn't get flat. I mean, it's just nothing, nothing really, you know, shell shocks her in. Uh, but she played exceptionally well and showed, her, showed off her skills. But Carly, you know, Carly had a rough week, first couple of days of practice against all this pressure. I mean, she was turning it over. Like, I asked her one time, I said, are you colorblind? Because she was throwing it to the other team. And, uh, and you know, but it, as much as I was on her, she still kept her poise and kept on. And she, she played exceptionally well today and proud of both of them. Uh, Kenny, you, you called this yesterday an, an, an orthodox matchup. When during the week did you kind of privately feel, okay, this is, this is going to be a good matchup for us? Oh, uh, probably about halftime. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. Uh, going into the game, it was really hard because you, you, I've, I hadn't seen them play live. Everything was on film. Everything was on film. And I couldn't, I couldn't gather their speed and I couldn't gather our height advantage on film, what it would be. And, um, and not until we got out there and we started you know, running up and down and moving um, is when I, I felt good about it. Because otherwise, I just didn't know, because I had never seen them before, uh, other than on film. But I thought, I thought that um, our length really bothered them. It really did. And we wanted to, I think Georgia alluded to it, we wanted to funnel them into certain spots. They are, they're, they're very dangerous from three, and they're very dangerous at the, at the layup. What they really don't like what I thought is they don't really like the mid-range. They didn't really like that little shot right around the corner. So, so we kind of ran them off the three-point line and contested at the, at, the, at the layup, at the basket. And I thought that was really good defense for us. And, you know, we were out of position a couple of times, and they got some offensive rebounds. But they, they just rebound with an abandon, reckless abandon. And, uh, and, but I thought we did a really good job defending them. Kenny, uh, you know, Marshall averages 24 and a half turnovers forced per game. You guys only gave up 15 today, and Georgia Amore only played about 20 minutes. Um, how pleased were you with your ball security today, and especially Carly Winslow obviously playing a large role? Man, in I, I am, I'm ecstatic. I mean, I, like I said, that was the first thing I said when I walked in there, the poise. You know, we, we put it up there. And, and when, I, when I say they play in, in chaos, I don't, I don't mean that in a bad way. They want, they want the game fouls, uh, you know, turnovers. That's like the longest game I think I've ever played. You know, it was it an hour and 57 minutes? And because uh, it was a lot of stoppage, you know, a lot of stoppage in play. Uh, I thought the referees did a tremendous job, uh, you know, just trying to keep the flow going. But it, it's their chaos and we wanted to be poised. And so I thought we won out on that. And therefore, that's why we were able to come away with a great win. And uh, I'm, I'm so proud of these kids and what they did. And I just want to go back in there and give them a hug. David, front row, and then Tim. Kenny, you mentioned earlier this week, Carly, you know, was, was having a rough time with it. Very uh, rough time. Uh, o Olivia said that, you know, to be poised like that, it's credit to you guys and, and what you prepared, you know, how you prepared them for this moment. What, what went into this week <laughs> to prepare them for, for this, and what did you like? You know what, uh, we, we went out there, so the first day that we were preparing for it, we were doing... Uh, practice guys and it was six on six on five and we had we had six practice guys running around just trapping and and getting after them and playing passing lanes and we it, for a while we couldn't get the ball across half court but we kept on doing it kept on doing it kept on doing it uh and, he, and we even played a little game called keep away where i made them go in half court and put seven practice guys out there and they just had to they had to make 10 passes 
pass, catch, pass, catch, running, running, running. And then, and then we told him, and, and this is nothing against Marshall, because I have the utmost respect for Marshall, but we had to put it in, 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 a, in a term that they would really understand it and how they were going to come after us. I said, it's like, like you're in recess, and you're, you're the fifth graders, and then the second graders want to come play the game, and they want to run after you, because they're just going to just try to get the ball and just run after you, because they're not as big as you are, and they're going to, they're going to do things to be in position to steal the ball. And it almost like was a light went off, a light bulb went off. And everything that we were doing was very unorthodox, but they got it. They got it, they understood it. And then when we got out here and we got to see the speed and feel, feel you know, what the game was gonna be like, I thought they handled it very well. And I thought their preparation was really good. Last two questions. Giovanni Heater, 3304 Sports. Coach, it feels like Matilda really is an X factor uh, for your team. She was scoreless in her last three games, yeah. obviously lit it up today. What was the communication like with her after she struggled a little bit the last three outings and what allowed her to just really open it up today against Marshall? So proud of her. She came and uh, she called me after the uh, ACC tournament and she was down and out because she, did, she felt like she didn't help us and, she, and really she didn't. And, um, and it was affecting the other parts of her game. And she, she called me and she, well, she texted me and she said, can I come to your office? And, uh, and she came to my office and we, we said nothing of substance. It was just more that we were in each other's presence and we were talking and uh, I think she understood that I believed in her and, uh, and, uh, and then she believed in me and what we were gonna do. And then ever since then, she's had a different mentality in practice. And um, she plays like that. We're a really good basketball team. And I was very proud of her and very happy for her. You know, her first time being in the NCAA tournament. And, uh, and so this is what she came here for. Tim, last question. Tim Stevens with HD Media in Huntington. Tell me more about what you did on the three-point line. Obviously, you had the size advantage underneath. But what you, you said you ran them off the three-point line. Tell me a little yeah, more about that. Yeah, it, it was an aggressive, aggressive sellout. And it was like, you know, we, we made sure that we were not going to uh, close out short and give them an opportunity to shoot it right in our face because Hayes will do that, Beeman will do that. They'll shoot it right in your face. And so uh, we, we had hand up. And one of my assistants uh, was doing the scout, and she kept saying, do not have uh, – airplane arms, and I didn't know what that meant, but it was like closing out with your arms down, looking like an airplane. So everything that we did was high hand, high hand, high hand, and made them, just ran them off the three-point line, and made them shoot contested threes when they did shoot it. Now, we knew they were gonna shoot it at a, uh, they were gonna shoot a lot of them. I think they shot 41, you know, but I thought we did a really good job of contesting it and, uh, or taking it away. Coach Brooks, thank you for your time. Thank you, guys. Best of luck to your team on Sunday. The Tech Locker Room is actually open until 6-18, so there's still time to ask questions there. Marshall News Conference is coming up next. Welcome to the Marshall Thundering Herd to the dais. We're joined by student athletes Abby Beeman, Brianna Campbell, and head coach Kim Caldwell. We will open it up to an opening statement from coach. Obviously not what we wanted, um, but you got to take a beat. You got to take a second. You got to reflect on the whole entire year as a whole, not just the last couple hours. Um, and so there's going to be some time where we hopefully quickly we can look back and celebrate our season. 
I appreciate every Marshall fan that tuned in. I appreciate every Marshall fan that was here in green. Um, it was great to see our fans sh come out and show out in a pretty awesome, hostile environment. So we appreciate you. We're sorry we didn't give you a better show. Okay. Let's open it up to questions for the student athletes, and we'll begin in the back row. Joey with Legacy Maker Sports Network. Uh, how, speaking on that crowd, how much of that uh, crowd affected you guys at the beginning? It seemed like uh, communication was a little bit of an issue right there at the beginning, and you kind of settled in a little bit, and then the game kind of got away from you. But yeah, if you could just speak to the crowd and how intense that was and how much that affected you guys. Yeah, um, you guys draw a great crowd. Um, it's really fun to play in, to have that to experience, because I know you know, a lot of people, even Power 5 schools, don't get that. So um, just shout out to your guys' fan base for that. But as far as playing in it, I mean, obviously you want the fans to cheer for you, not against you. But, um, yeah, it definitely affected, you know, I think we just had adrenaline going because so many people were in there. We couldn't hit shots early, and they were hitting shots. So I'd say that's kind of how it affected us the most. It's just like it kind of got us, like, too excited almost to play in front of all those people. Sure. Yeah, let's go Luke and then Greg. Luke Creasy, um, Herald Dispatch. When you look at the rebounding numbers, um, in in the margin of what the game ended up being, only minus three on the boards. Can you talk about your effort, especially in the offensive end, to pull in twenty uh, offensive rebounds? We'll start with Brianna. Uh, yeah. So, um, I mean, we had effort on the boards. We just weren't hitting shots uh, as we would uh, like to. Um, I think the effort. Uh, there was there um but yeah like i said we didn't really hit shots so yeah abby you guys settled in some in the first quarter and did a lot of good things for a good portion of the second quarter the last minute of the first half it kind of got away from you how important was that and if you can just kind of reflect back what what were some of the things that went wrong in that final minute or two yeah um honestly i was not on the floor for that final minute but uh, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, they may have probably hit some threes. I'm not really sure. But, yeah, I, I remember thinking to myself, it was a big momentum changer because I think we were up or we were only down by like seven and then a minute 30 left. And, it, and I think they went on like a 10-0 run. And then we were down 17 at half. So, um, yeah, just anything can happen in a minute. We can hit a lot of shots in a minute and so can another team. And that's kind of uh, what happened today, unfortunately. What is one thing that you'd like people to remember this particular team by? Start with Abby. Um, just how hard we play. Uh, and we play a different style. Hopefully it's really fun to watch. It, it wasn't today because we were not hitting shots. But if you watch any of our games all year long, um, I would like to think that we gave people a good show to watch. Um, and we're really, we're a really close team. Uh, we stay together. And I know people outside of our locker room don't know that. but. Um, I hope you can kind of tell that we played hard till the end, even though the score looked the way that it did. Brianna, do you have a reflection on that? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we're we a close team. Um, we'll play hard to the, uh, until the end. Uh, you know, unfortunately, like Abby said, we didn't have the outcome that we wanted. But, you know, we're, we're a hard playing team. And I think our playing style is pretty cool. So uh, looking toward the future for this group, um, I think it'll be, you know, something special to watch. And I'm sure they'll be back here. Greg. Abby, what is next for you? Oh, uh, that's a great question. I don't know. I mean, I love basketball, so yeah, we'll see. I'm not sure yet. Okay. And Tim. Tim Stevens with the Herald Dispatch in Huntington. Uh, they they did a good job against you, you three point wise. Were were they difficult to shoot over? Were you just not making making shots? What was what was the problem there? Additional questions for the student athletes? Right. Abby and Brianna, thank you for your time. Safe travels home, and we appreciate watching you this season. All right. Thank you. Safe travels. Coach, please. Just trying to leave. Okay. <laughs> can't can't, can't get out of here quick enough. We'll, we'll make it quick. We'll make it quick. Um, questions for Coach? We'll go to the back row. What about Virginia Tech made them such a challenge for you guys to, to make shots? Uh, their height, I think. Um, a tough environment on the road. 
But they're just, their length, and, and again, we kind of score in bunches, as you guys saw, just small bunches today, but normally when we get hot, we get hot, and we never had that momentum. I don't, I think we had it maybe for a second in the second quarter, but we never really had that momentum, so we couldn't really catch fire. Um, we didn't really turn them over the way we liked, so we didn't get the easy offense, so we never really got to see the ball go in, but that's just a great team. We're, we're rooting for that team, uh, and we said that in the locker room, that, hey, that, that, that right now, we... We want them to win it. We want them to win it all. Um, they've been through a lot, too. And so hats off to them. Um, and I can't wait to see what they do next. We'll go to Luke in the front one. You know, when you talk about that height, um, it didn't seem to matter much on the offensive end. We were grabbing those offensive boards. So can you just talk about the rebounding effort as a whole? That's been you know, kind of a staple for you guys um, this year is, is that effort off a missed shot. Um, can, can you talk about how you saw that? work tonight in yeah, some I ways. I think the neatest thing is they they were quick to tell me about the rebounds after the game. They said, Coach, you see the box score? I said, I never want to look at it again. And they said, well, we, we only lost the rebounds by three. And and so they're proud of that. They're proud of their effort. And it's a culture thing that we've built, and um, it's something that they look at, and they can hang their hat on, and, and I'm happy for them, and, and bless them. Bless them for getting 20 offensive rebounds when we're significantly shorter in, in every single position. So they did that well tonight, and they should be incredibly proud of that. Plus 15 offensively. Yeah. Uh, Greg. Uh, Kim, what's it been like having Abby for this season? You've coached against her. You've now coached her. Obviously, the success she had you know, throughout the season speaks for itself, but her leadership and the respect she seems to garner from her teammates also kind of speaks volumes. Yeah, absolutely. I think she's a once in a lifetime type of player that you get to that you get to coach. She is a leader. She gets everyone to play hard. She loves basketball. She's in the gym all the time. She does everything right. And so I'm going to miss her and I hope that I can find a way except for those two both. I hope I can find a way to show them how much I appreciate them and how much they've changed my life over the past season cuz you know, we had a great year but it doesn't happen without them. And one more for Tim here. Looking forward to next season. You, you you lose two significant players there and a little bit more, but a lot back too. Yeah, absolutely. And those two players are invaluable, and Tamia is invaluable, and, and they're irreplaceable. But I think we have learned a lot this year, and we obviously want to get back, and we want to represent our school a little bit better um, when we come back, if we get to come back. All right, Coach, thanks for your time, and congratulations on a great season. Safe travels home. Thank you. Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Uh, just a reminder, the Marshall Locker Room is open until 635. 635 for the Marshall Locker Room. Thank you.